Have I ever lied to you, darling? No. But you've misled me. <laughs> I don't bite, dear. Yes, but do you stab? I don't bite. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David. Today I want to play a game that's from the O2A2 Game Jam of 2022 called... Artificial Abnormality. Hello? Hello? Oh. Hi. There you are. A friend told me about you earlier. They said you looked really lonely down here, so I thought I'd drop by. Also, do you need a friend? I can be that friend if you do. Oh, isn't that nice? You're absolutely horrifying, friend. Huh? Lonely? Friend? What are you talking about? Where am I? What happened? Do I still have my kidney? And who are you? Ah, my mistake. I should have explained this. Let me start over again. So, my name is Azira, and I'm an experimental biologist. And because of that, you're no longer dead. Ah! I didn't know what happened to you, but you looked really lonely, just splattered in the back streets, you know? In the end, I really didn't want to see you like that, so I messed around a bit with your remains and brought you back. Oh. Gee. Thanks. Guess I should probably spare you the details. It's kind of messy, but you're all right now. Please try to have a good shot at life again. Um, thanks. I guess. Ooh. Wait, who splattered me? Now that I have my hands back, I'm gonna do the splattering. I wish I could say there's no reason to not believe you and that I trust you, but... I don't know. There's a lot of eyeballs and exposed flesh and organs. It's... it's kinda... Eh... Fluffed up or cool. I mean, I don't know. It's kinda cool. You think so? Thank you. The power of eldritch science really is fascinating, isn't it? Eldritch science? Oh boy. You can really be whatever you want if you just tried hard enough. If we become friends, maybe I can help you get there someday as well. I used to be human, but it was... limiting. There was a lot of things that could destroy my body or make me uncomfortable, so I set out to change it. And well, you two agree that the results are pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> did, did, did something. It's pretty some something, all right. You'd you'd fit in as like the final boss of something. Still, I do try my best to not look too messed up when I first meet new friends. Though some people are still understandably freaked out. Regardless, I hope that you can trust me. No pressure, though. I mean it. So, what is it that you even want? What do you mean? There are a lot of things I want. If it's from you, the only thing is friendship, really. If you're willing to accept it, of course. Sure! <laughs> Why not? Though, if you mean what I want in life, that's a whole other story. Do you still want to hear it? Sure, let's hear it. I, I got no place to be. I was previously splattered, as you say. Guess I don't mind having another friend after all. It's not like I... uh. Never mind. No, thank you. I'm glad you're willing to listen, because there's a lot. I want to defile something sacred, something so utterly revered by the normalcy of this world, and raise it to the ground. Well, good luck with that. Okay. I want to take the desecrated corpse of that untouchable concept and experiment on it, and see what I can make from the smoldering remains of this farce we call daily life. Yes, yes, keep talking, yes. I want to take apart one of those guys that's in charge of everything. I'll wear their skin and dig inside their brain. I want to know what made them so repulsive even for something like me. In the end, I just want to know everything there is to know about this world, and take everyone deemed as faulty and friendless and be their friend. Where's the lie? Where's the problem? How do we start? Hmm. I think that's it. For now, at least. You're right. That is... a lot. 
especially for a goal in life. That's a nice goal, I think so. I guess it's on me that I expected something more normal, though. You know, like those stories about monsters that just want to be accepted by human society, despite being an outcast. Well, I don't really care for that. Say, what do you think is the definition of normalcy anyway? I don't know. I guess it's just something that appeals to most people, right? Why do you ask? I'm having the feeling that Ezra is about to spit mad facts. He's gonna change the world. He's going to change my heart, mind, and body in just a few sentences. Hmm. I think normalcy is what the majority choose to believe and perpetuate, but also reinforced by those in charge of everything. Let's put it this way. If one day the ones in charge decided that everyone will have to consume each other for survival, it would be seen as normal, and those that refused to do so would be destroyed for being weak and abnormal. Yet, in the world that we are currently in, if you consume a human being, some sort of enforcer is bound to destroy us for being abnormal. You see, this so-called normalcy is all subjective, isn't it? Yes! I mean, he's right! This, this is something I think about often. I guess there's some truth in that. I, I think there's a whole truth in that. Normalcy is subjective. <laughs> Just me and uh, Azira screaming from our soapboxes. People think we're cosplayers, but no, that's our flesh. Thank you. I hope that made some sense. I'm not the best at words, but I think a lot about a lot of things. Normalcy really is a fickle concept, if you think about it. Perhaps the sort of normal life that humans take as granted would be some far-stretched esoteric concept on another planet. Exactly! Um, I think I saw a comic or something about aliens horrified that the human and their team drinks water. They're like, and they drink in it! They bathe in it! <gasps> Every morning they put, they put it on their face! Water! Ugh! Hmm. It's really great that we can be friends. You know, I'm really glad my friend told me about you. It's a scary thing being lonely, and no man is an island, and that's why I'm here. I'm just happy to have a new friend. Hopefully I'll see you around then. Ah! Oh! <sighs> I want to spend more time with Azira. He's cool. I want to I wanna be his friend. I want to talk about philosophy with him. Oh. What if I completely disagree with him and said, you, you look kind of messed up, friend. I mean, it does look cool. It looks very Final Boss-ish in a JRPG. But anyone walking down the street seeing him would either think he's a cosplayer or that he has some serious problem. Haha, <laughs> I guess this is to be expected. But that's alright. I think most people would say that, no? Like how a person is supposed to look and all that. I just remembered there was a, a little short, a cartoon, I can't remember if it, I think it came on Nickelodeon. He had become Inside Out Boy. Where it was called Inside Out Boy and it was like teaching kids about health and their bodies. But it always ended with uh, the adults or whoever is saying, okay, you can take that costume off. And the kid's like, no, this, this is my actual organs. What about the disguise? It's me, honest. He's telling the truth. He is? Then that must mean... Yeah! And them freaking out because he's inside out, boy. <laughs> so if someone doesn't look like what's considered normal, hmm, then that would cause some problems, wouldn't it? Fortunately for me, I'm cool with it, and I hope one day you'll be as well. Regardless, I hope that you can trust me. No pressure, though. I mean it. Oh, he's so sweet. Uh, what if I lie and disagree with him, saying, That's enough. There's no way that could make sense. It makes perfect sense. If you don't think about it too long, it'll make too much sense. Hmm. That's slightly disappointing, but it's all right. After all, meaningful disagreement perpetuates the improvement of this world, I think. I still have my reservations. Ah, so this is it, huh? I'll be off then. Still, have a good life as much as you can. Ah, well, that was nice of him. That was really nice of him. He's super sweet. 
This is another game that's part of the O2A2 game jam called Limerence. Are you all right, darling? We've been sitting here for five minutes and you haven't touched your dinner. Are you mad at me? I slowly returned from my dark headspace back to reality, back to the low light of the dining room. Despite the table being fit for a family, it was clear that it had only ever been used for two people. For them, sitting where their back was facing the window, so light envelops them like angels scratching its skin. And for whomever they kept chained to the other side. Oh! Oh no! It's for your own good, you know. I can't have you trying to run off, can I? Or perhaps rocking your chair backwards and smashing through the glass of the window. Because then you could get seriously injured or somehow escape. What would I do without you? Shut up, Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> I like when you say my name. I think they sit with their back to the window for the ephemeral ethereality. Eth eth can you can you find the definition of that word? That that one's new to me. For the visual of light rays surrounding them like a saint. But no amount of pretty imagery can disguise their evil actions. Tonight they cooked chicken, lined with rice and vegetables, that I had watched them chop up minutes before. Their knives for the kitchen are separate from the ones they use for flesh. Oh dear. Never once in my life had I been envious of a blade, of the slick cuts and echoing sounds between the air and the cutting board. Until now, of course. I tugged at the cuffs on my wrist that kept me restrained to the table. Hey, you're staring again. You should eat up. You need the strength for later. You didn't respond. Please, dear. I'll be nicer on you with the blades tonight if you do. I reached my right hand up to my neck and stroked my fingers over the tout skin of my collarbone, covered in bruises and newly formed scars from slashes across bone. Ow? Do you promise? Have I ever lied to you, darling? But you've misled me. <laughs> I don't bite, dear. Yes, but do you stab? I don't bite. That is the purpose of delusion, is it not? It's only in my nature. Like it is in your nature to despise me. I wish you didn't. We've been getting to know each other very well over the last few days. I knew nothing about them. But anything that I have not said of my own volition has been cut out of me. But enough of my ramblings. Eat, please. They gestured to the plate in front of me, accompanied by water and a plastic cup and a fork. I hesitated before picking up the utensil. I could try it again, to take myself out with my own accord, though they might punish me for even thinking it. Mm -hmm. Dear? Uh, uh. Stab myself, or leave it alone? Let's leave it alone for now. It wasn't worth trying. And without another word, I began to eat. The worst thing about Aaron, besides our relationship of them torturing me for their own amusement, was the fact that they're good at cooking. <laughs> this, this chicken is delicious, I hate it. I hate it. But they would never eat their own work. They would always put up a plate and silverware at their chair and never touch the setup. Hmm. They told me they didn't have to eat. Oh, that's never a good sign. Why do you even sit here and watch me if you aren't going to eat with me? It's to make you more comfortable, love. Yes, because comfort comes in bruised ankles and chained wrists. It's just weird. To me, it feels right. Dinner isn't just about food. It's also about the conversation and the experience. 
I think it's something much more sinister. I think they watch me in glee, with eyes lighting up like flames. Watch me indulge in the only pleasure I have besides sleep. They smirked as I struggled to bring the fork to my lips, both from the shackle and from the feeling of past pain. Is it good? It's always good. You don't need me to tell you that. I reached for the water and slowly drank. The cold stung my throat. I'm glad. I like to see you happy. Then why won't you let me go? Hmm? You're killing me, Aaron. To death, bro! You smile when we leave the temporary peace of the dining table because you know how I feel about every other room in this sprawling heck. The fear that prickles my neck that you'll plunge a surprise blade into my back and collect the pooling blood to keep in jars. What's up with that? I enjoy seeing you happy, but I enjoy seeing you crying much, much more. There's a pride to it, even for a being like me. The pride of knowing I've cut up your body, skin like a canvas, and turned you into the most beautiful artwork that will ever grace my gallery. I've caused those tears, and I can just as easily wipe them away. Got a, like a mug full of my tears somewhere too, don't you? And that's why I'm killing you. For the beauty. For the begging. For the pleading that I've heard from hundreds before you. You're different, though. You've survived longer than most. You have a vigor and a fighting spirit. And I think... Mm. That's why I love you. I don't know what's going on, but I'm scared. Is there any way out of that? Uh, stabby. I took a deep breath and pulled my arm back as far as the chains would let me. And I stabbed myself right in the throat. Why do I have a feeling that's just going to make things worse? Or, at least I tried. It stung like a brief needle in the skin and nothing more. I dropped the fork and felt at my neck, begging for a wound. It wasn't even bleeding. Darn it! Gosh darn it! Aren't you cute? You already tried that at our first night. Don't you remember that the tools are plastic? You don't think I'd trust you with metal or wooden tools, do you? It didn't work the first time. Did you think it would again? No. You poor, poor thing. We'll deal with this later. Now, eat, or I'll rip that tongue of yours out and make it the last thing you've ever tasted. Ah! I'd miss hearing you talk. I picked up the fork again, hesitating. And without another word, I began to eat. Okay, I want to play one more game from the O2A2 game jam called... My Angel Can't Be This Beautiful. Nightmares have always plagued me. Ever since I was young, I would constantly fear sleeping. Sleepless nights would turn myself more paranoid. A mere human could not survive without sleep, so those missed nights sleep would turn into days' worth of nightmares. But recently, these nightmares seem to have been stopped in their tracks. A shadowy figure, great majestic wings, a light. They seem to fight away the nightmares. It is to them I owe my sanity. Ooh. Harmed? An indistinct murmur reached my ears. A gentle hand, more akin to a talon, rested on my face, the coolness jarring and sending shivers down my warm body. Suddenly, I jolted to awareness. I was in my bed, blanket presumably on the ground in a feverish fit, and the bedside lamp on. To myself, I muttered, 
That's strange. What I was willingly ignoring was the figure that was on my bed, who scurried back softly, speaking in vain. Go back to sleep, little one. I'll protect you. Was this the figure that protected me? The desire to meet my protector overwhelmed my fear. My eyes snapped to meet theirs, or attempted to, as there were only scars where I should be... Cool. Despite the lack of eyes, their face suggested surprise as I took in their form. Luscious and silky, it was only fair to describe it as such, hair cascaded from a scarred head, attached to a figure that was neither male nor female. Beep. B beautiful And terrifying. You can perceive me. A voice boomed in my head. I covered my ears, hoping it would deafen the harmonious sound that resonated in my ears. Y yes And you're fluffing loud! Mm. The figure stilled, including the previously quivering wings. It tilted its head and frowned, a downward curve of plump lips. Such language is prohibited. Raising an eyebrow, I retorted without a second thought. Is telling the truth prohibited, too? With more thought, I added. And get out of my head! The person's wing fluttered again, responding with mere interest. I apologize. I was fascinated with the movement of their lips. Crap. They're kind of hot. <laughs> I seriously do not think a monster is hot, do I? I think I've read way too much fanfic recently. <laughs> Conversation stalled. Mutual curiosity apparent. Who are you? Who am I? You do not need to know. But I want to know. There's that frown again. I want to bite those lips. Calm down! main character. I need holy water. Or bleach. <laughs> I am an angel. An angel? Aren't angels supposed to be more... I gestured vaguely at their body. The only thing that looked vaguely angelic was the cloth covering the body so loosely that it seemed it would fall off with a single tug. Am I gonna have to Spritz this main character with water or something? Mm -hmm. Nothing. What's your name? And your pronouns, for that matter. I do not have a name to you mortals. They ignored the second question. <laughs> I'll take that as any pronouns, then. And for name, I'll call you... Hmm. How about... Max Cutie? <laughs> Aww, 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 they blush. I am a holy servant under the name Anur. I winked at them to their displeasure. Their wings quiver when they're irritated. Interesting. So, you're the one who's been protecting me, Anur? Anur? Pretty. My full name is Anur. Right, so you have been. I leaned forward, close enough that their lack of breathing was apparent. I smiled, not deterred, feeling a warmth in my chest that had nothing to do with the temperature. Are the main characters gonna need a cold shower here? Thank you. For everything. I was getting so sick of dreaming about work and, and school that I don't go to anymore. Thank you for relinquishing those nightmares. You are not afraid of me. Why would I be scared? I mean, those are pretty cool chompers you got, but... I softened my voice. Really, you've been helping me a lot. If anything, I'm thankful. M my gratitudes. Plus, I've seen scarier things, which I'm sure you know. Their face looked grim, eyes closed. I shall not let any of those demons reach you anymore. 
just the word brought chills down my spine. I believe you. Demons and angels. What a crazy world. Wait. How am I able to see you? I thought angels and the like remain unseen by humans unless they want to be seen. But you weren't expecting me to see you, right? It must be from the lingering demon's energy. But why are there demons after me? It is well known that demons seek to destroy the aura of pure souls. I have a feeling that the MC is anything but a pure soul. Pure soul? Me? I sure ain't holy or religious, but it's rather flattering to be referred to as pure by an angel. <laughs> It is the reason I have been summoned to protect you. However, it was my turn to be confused. I pledge on my angelhood that I will do everything in my power to protect and honor you. I frowned. First of all, do I have any consent on this matter? Secondly, does that mean we can't do the horizontal tango? Where's my water bottle full of holy water? This <laughs> this main character needs to be tamed! Calm down! I mean, I fully understand seeing a handsome slash beautiful angel and your first, your first idea is to, um... What is the horizontal tango? You know... Anur stared blankly at me. With a sigh, I made a gesture, and understanding flooded their gaze as they flushed red, stuttering. Uh, wh why would we do such things? I'll take that as a no. Finding myself getting carried away, I changed the topic rather abruptly. Will I see you tomorrow? You want to see me again? That would be hecka nice. Aw. You... I won't be leaving you. Not until all the demons that haunt you leave. I'll take any win I can get. And maybe I'll be able to change your mind. Anner continued to look at me with a perplexed expression, which I returned with what I hoped to be a confident smile, despite the nervousness out of fear of rejection I was feeling. I yawned despite myself, and they smiled. Sleep. Your body needs to recover. I struggled to keep my eyes open. Promise I can see you again tomorrow? I swear. With the heat in my chest, I let sleep overtake me. Oh, Jeez, MC, calm down. I fully understand. I fully understand being that thirsty, but come on now. You just met the angel. I'd like to do one more game from the O2A2 game jam called My Loving Submission. I've always been fascinated by caves. In the stories I read, caves were places of adventure and danger, mystery and wonder. The places where dragons lie and pirates hide their treasures. Caves were where interesting people go and interesting things happen. I wanted so badly to be one of those people. So when I discovered that there was a cave not far from where I lived, I was thrilled. It was hidden in the forest. No path led to it. The entrance was low and covered in weeds. The pitch-black darkness inside felt inhospitable. I hesitated. What if the cave was unstable and collapsed on top of me? What if someone had dumped their unwanted asbestos in there? What if... What if there were bats? What if there was an endless pit in the middle of it, waiting to swallow anyone foolish enough to enter? Absurd as it was, I suddenly became certain that there was indeed a pit in the middle of the cave. I edged away from the entrance, terrified. Every now and then I would return to the entrance. I would stare into the darkness and think of the pit that was waiting for me. I would shiver and walk away. Don't want La Pile du Vide creeping up on ya. On that spring day we visited my childhood home, I tried to come up with things to amuse you with. I thought of the cave. 
You said nothing as we pushed our way through the thickets of willow and juniper. I had planned to make a small speech at the entrance, to explain my theory about the endless pit. We would chuckle at my silly fantasy, and we would walk away. But you walked right in without hesitating, like it was the most obvious thing to do. The darkness swallowed you up, and I stood there, alone and frozen solid. Panic. The pit had taken you. I had been robbed of the most important person in my life. <sighs> oh no! But then I saw the light flashing from your phone. You coming? You called. With a mixture of relief and apprehension, I stumbled into the cave for the first time. There was no asbestos, only rusty beer cans and faded candy wrappers. Some ice lingered on the walls and sparkled when the light of your phone hit it. Ooh. Beautiful in a simple, understated way. It wasn't the Cave of Wonders, but not a gateway to heck either. Truth told, it was shockingly mundane. Just a large hole in the ground, formed by the slow processes of nature. The thing I had been so fascinated by, and so terrified by, turned out to be just another place. When I think of the impact you've had on me, I often think of that day. You've given me the courage to do so many things I've always wanted to do, but thought to be too risky, too dangerous. I've told you things about myself, dark, forbidden things I had been convinced I would have to take to the grave with me. Oh, okay. You said, as if I just told you my favorite flavor of ice cream. It didn't make me feel dismissed. It made me feel normal. Normal in a way I've never felt. Not the anxious charade of normalcy I'd been forced to play for the first three decades of my life, but normalcy on my own terms. I no longer felt ashamed or scared of the wild things inside of my head. They were just some more thoughts and feelings, and an ocean of thoughts and feelings. You gave me the peace I had sought in vain from the bottle. You took me to my first pride. I've always wanted to go, but the what-ifs in my head kept me away. You were glorious in your rainbow regalia, powering ahead without any regard for what other people might think. Your strength gave me strength. I walked head held high in front of the crowd, as part of the crowd, in the clothes I'd chosen, with the words I'd chosen, with the people I'd chosen. And nothing terrible happened, not really. My feet hurt, the music made my ears ring, and the sun burned my shoulders. It felt like any other festival. Normal. Our normal. A normal that allowed me to wear heels and a collar and glitter on my chest? You fixed my normal, taught me how to live without being paralyzed by fear. But you are not without your own fears. It's not cruelty that you fear, but kindness. The only kind of love you have experienced before me has been transactional, conditional. Your parents loved you, but only as long as you existed with the narrow confines of their morals, obeyed their every command. Your previous partners loved you, but in exchange they demanded things from you. Things that you hated to do, and things that made you hate yourself. So when I showered you with my adoration, brought you thoughtful gifts, cooked and cleaned for you, or told you what a wonderful person you are, your eyes filled with fear. You saw a debt mounting. What will I demand of you in return? Mm. Hush. There is no debt. No demands. My love is unconditional. Your happiness is my happiness. Because I love you. That's it. I asked you to collar me. To remind you. I belong to you. The collar affirmed the nature of our relationship. I want to have you. I am yours to have. 
The collar doesn't constrain me. It holds me together. For without you, I would slowly but surely dissolve back into the non-person I was before I met you. This is not insanity, nor depravity, but symbiosis. I need security and firmness. You need care and softness. We complement each other beautifully. This is what love looks like. Our love. Our normal. Tonight, we return to the cave. Interesting people doing interesting things. Will you fill me with your strength and your courage? And I will answer with my loving submission. Oh, that was so sweet. That was so sweet. I feel like that could resonate with a lot of people. That was absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope. <laughs>